I've re-entered my adult Pokemon addiction phase by creating 3D Pokemon cards, giant 3D Pokemon card worlds, and in this video, I've returned to make giant 3D Pokemon balls. Well, ball worlds. This video is brought to you by Anycubic. Check out the Photon D2 DLP 3D printer or the Anycubic Cobra Go with a link in the description. More about them later in the video. But if I am to prove myself, as the Pokemon master I claim to be. I gotta move past generation one. I'm getting so much feedback that I'm like, dude, there are other Pokemon than Bulbasaur and Pikachu. Is there? There are apparently, I didn't know that. I've heard. I'm gonna create little worlds inside Pokeballs. They're the perfect foundation to begin with because they're an incredible size to build a Pokemon world inside, but they have mechanics that need to be removed. Specifically, a spring-loaded opening that unlatches and opens the Pokeball. I don't want it spring-loaded because I don't want it to be forced to be open, and I also don't want the unsightly latches because they're gonna get in the way of our little diorama. So, I pulled all three Pokeballs apart until I had three simple Pokeballs to create my world in. Turns out these Pokeballs make perfect foundations for my project. So of course, using the handy laser cutter we have lying around, I measured the inside sphere and with a little bit of tweaking, got a shape that I could put in eventually with a white acrylic that I can paint later down the line for a nice horizon. Now mind you, I'm taking the easy route with all of this, but the more tenacious amongst us in the studio are actually working on their own Pokemon terrariums as I speak. And they ain't taking any shortcuts. They are hand sculpting their own Pokemon. I am of course talking about Tabletop Time. So go check out Tabletop Time's video after you watch this video where Dave Murray and Jen hand sculpt their own Pokemon and hand make their own Pokemon terrariums. But hey, I'm one man and I'm making three, so let's take some shortcuts, including 3D printing my Pokemon. The second generation starters, Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and Totodile. So let's start off with Chikorita, the leaf Pokemon. Chikorita emits pleasant smells from the leaves on their heads and enjoys sunbathing. That's the, that's the, po that's uh, Jazz of the Pokedex at your service. Chikorita first appeared in episode 117 of the TV show in the episode titled The Double Trouble Header. Ash and the crew meet Casey, another Pokemon trainer, as Casey and her Chikorita are fighting a Rattata. Casey's a big team Electabuzz fan and after Ash points out they aren't a great team, prompting Casey to challenge Ash to a Pokemon battle. However, Ash wouldn't capture his own Chikorita for another eight seasons. I plan to capture my own right here, right now. Using modeling compound, concrete coloring mixes, a little bit of Mod Podge, and of course some sand. With a bit of water, it all mixes together to the perfect earthy mix that I can then spread as neatly and flat as possible to create the perfect foundation of what will be beautiful, luscious, flowery fields for Chikorita to joyfully leap around in. With my earthy surface now dry and the foundation done, I went in and laid down some PVA with a little bit of paint added just to tint that ground a green color and used one of my favorite ever hobby things to do, static grass. Running a very faint charge through this using a static grass applicator, you can get static grass to stand satisfyingly upright. And I think we'll give Chikorita's home a really comfortable look. With the luscious fields laid down neatly, it was time to add a little bit of color in the form of gamer's grass, specifically flower tufts, a little bush here or there, and a few laser cut plants just for variety. Then it was time to paint the skyline. Just like that, I have a really simple, vibrant, colorful sky behind Chikorita, which I can hand paint a little bit of detail on because obviously the airbrush is only able to be so crisp or detailed. But there is one last thing I need to add in and that is the Pokemon itself. Having beautifully printed on my Anycubic 3D printer, Chikorita is, as you can see, a really simple paint job. Being basically three colors, two tones of green and a little bit of red for the eyes. Last but not least, it was time to add Chikorita to their home in the Pokeball.
Now, if you're as satisfied with that result as I am, you'll be even more satisfied if you could do it yourself, which it's easier than you think it is. Thanks to Anycubic and the technology of 3D printing, hobbyists can basically make their own toys at home with the click of a button. Introducing the brand new Anycubic Photon D2, the DLP 3D printer. Anycubic is bringing us industrial standard DLP printing to everyday consumer and 3D printing hobbyists. The Photon D2 boasts a screen life up to 10 times longer than a standard LCD printer. And a printer like the D2 is perfect for extremely high resolution, hand-sized hobby projects. But if you wanna go bigger and lighter, perhaps you'd be thinking of getting a filament printer. You can now start with with the Anycubic Cobra Go at a budget-friendly price of under $200. It mitigates any issues like power outages with the ability to continue prints after power drops. Go check out Anycubic's Photon D2 DLP 3D printer and the Anycubic Cobra Go linked in the description. Thank you to Anycubic for sponsoring this video. Now it's time to bring our next Pokemon to life. Next up, it's time to capture Cyndaquil. Cyndaquil, the fire mouse Pokemon normally quite well-mannered and calm. However, Cyndaquil will shoot a scorching flame out of its butt when upset out of its back. Sorry, I misread that. First appearing in episode 141 of the TV show in the episode Good Quill Hunting, in which Ash is in a race with his fellow Pokemon trainer Koji to capture a Cyndaquil they find. When Ash successfully captures Cyndaquil, Koji challenges him to a battle for Cyndaquil. Ash wins the battle, but Koji isn't giving up and attempts to catch Ash's Cyndaquil with a net. Cyndaquil is having none of it, of course, and Koji runs away, only mildly singed. So it's time to create Cyndaquil's world in my little Pokeball. The same starting process, of course, prepping the skyline, which you can then remove and paint later, and the base. Now, I want to make a point of difference for each of these Pokemon. Even though their appearances in the shows and on their Pokemon cards, they're usually in pretty similar environments, grassy and lush. So for Cyndaquil, as you can see, I've used sort of a, a similar compound mix, but this time with a bit of a gravelly ballast instead of a sand and I've mixed in black paint instead of concrete colouring. This, when it's dry, as you can see, ends up with a bit of an asphalt effect, which I think looks pretty cool. The idea behind this could be that he's on the road where people are traveling on their Pokemon journeys. I added a little bit of an earthy color and pigment powders to this just to pull it away from a flat black and gray. And where Chikorita's color scheme was sort of more on the vibrant green and colors, I thought Cyndaquil could still be surrounded by nature, but in this case, drier grass and areas that maybe have been a little bit burned by its back. I want to add a pop of colour here or there, of course, but I'm trying to accentuate the fire type element of Cyndaquil. So by using yellower grass and drier looking tufts, and then when I move on to the skyline, going for more of a sunset vibe with vibrant oranges and yellows, I think will really emphasise the fire type element of Cyndaquil. And with those final details done, it's time for Cyndaquil to enter his new home and hopefully find his happiness in his own little domain. Stop whatever you're doing. Wait, what are you what are you doing? You're watching this video. Don't stop watching this video. Keep doing that. I just wanted to interrupt briefly to say I'm going to Pax Oz. And if you're Australian or even not Australian and going to Pax Oz, I might see you there. I'm doing a meet and greet Friday afternoon with the Tabletop Time team and a panel on Friday evening. It'll be a whole lot of fun and you'll spot me through the crowd because I'll be wearing my Space Bears shoulders, probably. 
I didn't even get a chance to dress up. That's not true. To the car. Well done. <laughs> I need therapy. So come say hi. Links in the description if you want to get your tickets to Pax Oz. Uh, back to the video. It's totally time for Totodile, the big jaw Pokemon. Totodile has strong jaws that can crush just about anything. Trainers, beware. This Pokemon loves to use its teeth. First appearing in episode 151 of the TV episode, the Totodile Duel. This episode sees Ash and Misty's friendship pushed to their limits as they both attempt to capture a Totodile at the same time, eventuating in a battle between Ash and Misty. Ash wins the match and gets his Totodile. However, Misty is not left without her own prize as her Poliwag evolves into Poliwhirl. Now my Totodile is not going to leave empty handed in this video because I'm going to make him a lovely home. Again, leaning in early to a visual point of difference, I cut the inner foam for the Pokeball on an angle to create enough room below for what will eventually become a resin pool because I want more than half of Totodile's Pokeball to be a lovely lake. And in fact, in the picture I was using as a reference for Totodile, he's on this great little rock in the middle of the body of water, which is perfect because I have these little rock offcuts from the Mordor build I did a couple of months ago, one of which I grabbed, broke up, put in the center of my recently muddied area, and then with a little bit of Mod Podge, sprinkled around some sand for what would be the bed of my river, which of course has the rock that Totodile will stand on. With that fully set, I move on to add the greenery and some living elements to my environment because the river or lake would be the final touch. With most of my tufts in place and all of that serving to really bring this to life, I sealed off the edge, that front circular notch of the Pokeball with some tape and do a UV resin pour. A mix of UV resin with a couple of drops of alcohol ink to colour. Pouring as carefully as I can to preserve some of the greenery to pop out and make sure that there's variety, but also to get as smooth and clear a watery effect as possible. Popping as many of the bubbles as I can before whacking a UV light on it to set it and finalize Totodile's home. Being a water Pokemon, and of course we've leaned into different aesthetics for the different skylines, it of course made sense to go with beautiful blue sky with some lovely clouds. These 3D printed characters are so satisfying to paint and really simple. I did get them just from Googling, just for th some 3D printed Pokemon files. They were a couple of bucks each from an independent sculptor who I won't bring attention to because I'm not sure they're personally affiliated with the Pokemon company. But whoever made these sculpts, thank you very much. And to all independent sculptors out there who make cool stuff for people to 3D print at home, thank you because it's such a fun hobby and it's so cool. There's so much out there to bring to life. And with the technology of something like 3D printers, it's as easy now now to click print and turn it into a beautiful project as it could be in your imagination. It's amazing. We are living in the future that my childhood self would have dreamed of. Enabling me to very easily bring projects like this to life. And here they are all together. My three starter Pokemon from generation two. This was a really fun project and I'm so chuffed with the results. These Pokeball frames were perfect to sort of lay the foundation for my project. And at long last, our heroes reached the end of their Pokemon journey, having gathered the Pokemon they set out to acquire and ready for the next adventure. How was that? Did that feel Pokemon-y? That was good. Yeah. Oh, Jazz, are real, is it over already? Unfortunately, the journey with me is... But fear not! I am not the only one in the studio who has made Pokemon terrariums. In fact, Tabletop Time has hand-printed and sculpted three, and they're the latest. I'm playing catch-up here. I'm on Generation 2. They have created the status from the soon-to-be-released Pokemon game. It's going to give you just like a hint of this gravity-defying one, but you're going to actually have to go over to Tabletop Time to watch the whole video because they made amazing creations, and they're very, very talented and very, very cool. Don't tell Dave. To, I called him cool. Can you edit it out? So that's over there for you to enjoy. I'll link that in the description under the card. Otherwise, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching and joining me on my Pokemon journey. Uh, as a mid-30s dad who's reawakening to his childhood self and very excited about tax-deductible Pokemon cards, which is the way adults enjoy Pokemon. Like and subscribe.